fully online right now, then I'd love to help you uh, through that journey as well. To all the staff from Speakers Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all, because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. I just wanted to say being out of the workforce for six years, looking after little kids and this is the first course I've ever done and it was astounding, it blew my mind, it was beyond my expectations and thank you Kate for the feedback today, that was brilliant and it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before because you know when you leave for a while and you come back it's all a bit dodgy so thank you. Sam, thank you, thank you, thank you, that has been absolutely awesome, I've learned a hell of a lot today and I really feel like we're all improving so thank you so much, it's been oh, really awesome. I wish everyone all the best on this on the course. I think it was a wonderful course. And Sam, you've created a, a, an amazing business, but I also want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource. And I congratulate them for supporting you. It's excellent. I'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done, but I'd really like to thank everybody else. I have learnt so much from all of you. It's just been so exhilarating. I'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal. So thank you all very, very much. So I want to say, look, I've forever been doing courses and programs. I've probably spent over $350,000 in my life. Um, this was worth every cent. I'm very, very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches. Um, and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget. Um, definitely was worth every minute as well, so thanks. Hi guys, I just wanted to say uh, my work relies on face-to-face -face, uh, workshops, speaking at conferences around the world, so investing in this course is really about looking to the future, so it's really an investment in the long term. It's been a really, really professionally put together course, so commendations all round to all of you. I had a story that I didn't know how to get out to the wider, broader audience. I didn't know if it mattered. But I came to the three-day premiere's boot camp and I had my aha moment. I can't believe it. I was so worried my investment might be lost, but it's not. So do yourself a favour and come along to the speaker's boot camp. I ask you today, what will you do when you're next faced with a difficult situation? Or, when you're helping someone through a difficult situation, will you ignore it or will you face it head on? You've been on an amazing journey, but now you've reached a turning point. Actually, you have turned already. Hey guys, Sam Cawthorn here, CEO and founder of Speakers TV. Lean in where you can, give us any level of feedback, and we are really excited about your success. And don't forget, the best is yet to come. I spent my entire career in corporate, in the corporate world, so I studied a Bachelor of Wine Marketing and then that saw me move through the industry and now I find myself in the health and wellness industry working in sales and marketing. I found myself uh, working with Sam Cawthorn so I was fortunate enough to see him speak and then to work with him from there and, and it actually came about as a result of feeling like I was really confident on stage so feeling like I was in a position where I was able to speak on stage and be confident at relating to people I always thought that that was a strength of mine and it wasn't until then having a couple of episodes where I went up on stage and, and I found that my audience actually didn't relate to me as well as what they what I would have hoped and also that they they felt like it wasn't an authentic uh, delivery and as a result of that my message was actually not being delivered clearly and so I wasn't having the impact so as a result of that I then signed up to, to Speakers Institute. So I'm really early in on my journey at the moment so I've only just started 
but I did do the Premier Boot Camp six months ago. So with six months ago, I noticed that I'd come in sort of at basically at rock bottom in terms of not quite sure who I was or my why and what I wanted to be as a, as a person up on stage. But now I found myself having only done the, the boot camp, but I find myself now really clear on who I am as a person, really comfortable in my own skin and really confident up on stage so I'm able to project myself and 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 portray an image of me as me um, and be confident with that so it's not about trying to be somebody that I'm not and that's all as a result of surrounding myself and being in the proximity of really great people and having fantastic coaches and mentors at Speakers Institute. Welcome to Saturday's episode of Speakers TV. And if you've been tuning in all throughout the week, I'm super excited about today's episode because not only have we got people sharing their own amazing stories about getting their message out there, but also we really believe in you and your message. And so that is why we've gone all around the world to bring to you some of the greatest speakers, some of the greatest lessons and actual tangible result to help you go from where you are today to where you really want to be. I'm super excited about today's episode and I know that here on your Saturday there is nothing else better to do than to tune into this episode here on Speakers TV. See you soon. Our first speaker. Our first speaker is not only the co-founder and deputy CEO of Imperious Solutions, an AI company that has won over 20 industry business awards. He served over 300,000 corporate users of Fortune 500 firms in bringing in AI to their firm. Not only is he a author, a global speaker, an author of the disruption of, uh, sorry, the future of disruption of AI, but he's also a tr speaker's tribe leader of Singapore. And a friend of mine, please welcome to the stage, Tony Tan. Let me share something that most of us might not know that I have only learned of recently. Today, all of us here is in the fourth industrial revolution. The first was about mechanization. The second 
was about mass production. The third is about communication. And the fourth industrial revolution is about digital disruptions. The fourth industrial revolution is also known as the age of artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? At its most fundamental state, it's taking lots of data, apply a set of rules over it to derive an outcome or to solve a problem. But why are there so much confusion about AI? How many of you here have uncertainty, anxiety, or even a little fear that one day AI will take over humanity? Can I have a show of hands, please? Yes, quite a few of us. And I'm not surprised. In reality, there are three different types of AI. The first type of AI is artificial narrow intelligence. It is called narrow because it can only do one task and do it very well. Unlike we human beings, it can't multitask. One of the most famous examples you might heard of is an AI program by IBM called Deep Blue who have beaten the Russian chess grandmaster, Gary Kasparov. Closer to home, all of you who has a habit of talking to Siri, that's an example of this type of technology. Currently, 100% of all AI use cases in the world belongs to artificial narrow intelligence. And for the duration of this talk, this is the only AI that I'll be talking about. The second type of AI is called artificial general intelligence. For a long time now, the AI community has been trying to build an AI that reaches the intelligence of humans. To do that, they need to map the human brain. In a human brain, there are 86 billion neurons. With the latest computer and supercomputers that we have, we are able to map a grand total of 307 neurons. In case you are wondering, that's the brain of a tapeworm. <laughs> yes, that is where AI is today. Of course, we fantasize, right? We want a robot like 3CPO as our domestic helper to do our language translation for our kids. But in reality, in reality, what we really have is iRobot, your friendly vacuum cleaner. The third type of artificial intelligence that we have is artificial super intelligence. That is a state of intelligence where machine intelligence has surpassed human intelligence. One of the possible examples for those of you who are fans of Terminator, you'll realize there's this computer called Skynet that's directing all these cyborgs to kill off humanity. But we all know that is pure fantasy. Artificial narrow intelligence is already powering the rise of a group of digital influencers in the world. And the most famous is Sophia. Sophia charges in excess of 58,000 pounds per keynote. I'm not sure how many of us today can say the same <laughs> for our race. Of course, we aspire to be. Will, the question is, will Sophia and people like them take away our roles as influencers, as human influencers? The answer right now, I want to give everybody, is an absolute no. Why is that? Because Sophia lack consciousness. As such, she's not able to reason, she's not creative, she doesn't have common sense, and she's not able to relate with us humans well. Sophia will never be a powerful storyteller. However, we need to harness the underlying technology of Sophia to amplify ourselves as powerful influencers. And there's three ways we can do it. And I've experienced these three ways. 
due to a professional and personal crisis of my life. I'm a co-founder and a sales leader of an IT organization for the past 20 years. In these 20 years, I've trained over 300 sales account managers and product specialists in presentation skills. And I realized it takes me about 15 hours to get them to a certain level of competency. But even that is not enough. We all know our presentation degrades over time from a lack of practice. I need to find another 15 hours just to get them current with their skills. I've been thinking, there must be a better way to do this. Two years ago, 2018, my life hit a crisis. In a period between January and February, I have 100% turnover of my sales force. This is due to personal and professional reasons. As a result of that, my sales plunged by over 90%. I was flooded with customer queries. I have to answer to customer problems. I have to hire a brand new sales team and I have to train them. And if this wasn't enough, my back-end operations was suffering from low productivity due to doing too much repetitive processes. It was a perfect storm. I've never gone through so much stress, had anxiety attacks in my life. In fact, I've reached a low point of my life. If I allow this to continue, 75 of my employees will have lost their jobs. And with them, the massive pain and suffering that were brought to their families. It was at this point that we have decided to embrace AI, to build an AI platform, to optimize our op operation, and to elevate our issues. Today, with an AI platform in place, we are able to automate our backend and improve productivity by over 40%. We have implemented an AI assistant, or known as a chatbot, that automates inquiries from our customers that reduce the load on our sales team by 20%. We are also able to bring in an AI communication coach to coach our sales team so that they are able to be powerful communicators and get the results that my company needs. We are now far stronger than where were we before the crisis. And I'd like to share with all of you here three ways that you can use AI to amplify your ability as influencers. It does not matter if you are an entrepreneur or you are a speaker. It applies to everyone. Number one, communication. We all know communication is the number one tool, skill to have in this world. And all great influencers has to be great communicators. To do that, we need to practice and get feedback constantly. But is it always possible? Imagine if you have an AI coach in your pocket. Imagine if you have it in your smartphone. Before every important presentation or important speech, you take it out and the AI in there is able to guide you on your non-verbals, on your body language. Are you stroking your chin a little bit too much? It will tell you. Do you have belly insecurity? Or you could be a dancer on the stage that could distract your presentation. Let AI feedback to you and guide you so that you are able to reduce these movements to be a better communicator. Tonality. In our presentations, we do not want to come across as medicated, as my coach used to say, or we do not want to shout throughout the presentation. We want to optimize our energy levels so that we are able to engage our audience in effective ways. Let AI guide you and give you feedback to manage your energy levels so that you can ace your presentation with your audience every time. 
Filler words. We all have filler words. It's made worse with a lack of practice. And sometimes we don't even know we have filler words. Let AI help us to identify our filler words and eliminate them so that we become better communicators. At the end of the day, the AI will be able to give us an average score of how we're doing as communicators and we are able to practice against it to up our game. Number two, engagements. Marketeers are looking at a set of metrics to gauge how effective is an influencer today. One of the most important metrics they look at is engagement rates. Engagement rates like likes, shares, comments, and length of view. With these engagement rates, they will decide which influencer to hire and how much to pay. Needless to say, personalized end user experience for your users and your followers is now critical. Yet, there's only one of you. You can't be everywhere at the same time. How are you going to provide this personalized service? Have no fear. AI is here to help you. With the latest digital imaging technology augmented by AI, we are able to create an exact virtual clone of you with the same exact physical and emotional attributes so that you are able to provide this type of services. We call this the virtual human. Let's take a look at what is this virtual human as it could be you. Uh, that was on purpose to get your attention. <laughs> imagine, imagine there's hundreds of you, thousands of you engaging your subscribers and your followers every second, every moment, every day, answering questions, solving problems, helping you to sell your product and services. Let AI help you to increase your effectiveness let AI increase your results and up your engagement rates. The third area of where AI can help you is in work optimization. Influencers are a busy bunch of people. We all know that. They have to do podcasts. They have to blog. They have to do video content. They will appear on YouTube. They have to write books and they have to speak. They need to do more with less. We need to optimize their workflow. And yet every day, they are doing the non-sexy stuff but critical to their operations. For example, they need to invoice their clients on time to get paid. They need to pay their bills to their suppliers on time so that all their social media platforms run well. They need to back up their critical content. How many of you here in the last 24 months have lost data because you did not back up? Can I have a show of hands, please? Oh, very good. In fact, it's, there's not many of you. But backing up data, we know, is critical. Let AI help you with this mundane task. Digital worker is a class of technology that sits within your computers. They work tirelessly. They do not eat. They do not sleep. They do not take medical leave. And most importantly, they are always accurate in their work and they will never give us an attitude. <laughs> so let digital workers take away the mundane, help you to invoice your customers, help you to play, pay your suppliers, and help you to back up your critical content so that you're able to do more with less and optimize your life and create more viral content. Now the question is, would you all like to see what is it like to live a day of an AI-powered influencer. Yes. yes? Let me show you a two-minute video of the possibilities.
Good afternoon. I'm interested in one of the courses in the art school. Thank you for your inquiry. We have many courses available. Hi, I want to find out um, how do I change my course date because I realise there's a crash in my calendar. We have three other dates available. Wow, I think I might just get it. That's an excellent choice. Have you ever felt That was a great speech, man! Thanks, Alvin! Can I book you for the next three events? Absolutely! That's brilliant, man! That's brilliant! My sincere vision for all of us here today is to harness AI, combine the power of AI to the strength of humanity and fuse them together to create an AI-powered influencer so that we can rise above the crowd, leapfrog our competition and most importantly, unstoppable. My name is Tony Tan, and I'm the future in the present. Thank you! One thing that I, that I want to acknowledge you about is investing in yourself and ultimately spending time in online education. If you can learn how you can influence more powerfully through video, if you can learn how to create like your online virtual product and even make money online right now, then I'd love to help you uh, through that journey as well. To all the staff from Speakers Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. I just wanted to say being out of the workforce for six years, looking after little kids and this is the first course I've ever done and it was astounding, it blew my mind, it was beyond my expectations and thank you Kate for the feedback today, that was brilliant and it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before because you know when you leave for a while and you come back it's all a bit dodgy so thank you. Sam, thank you, thank you, thank you. It has been absolutely awesome. I've learned a hell of a lot today and I really feel like we're all improving. So thank you so much. It's been oh, really awesome. I wish everyone all the best on this on the course. I think it was a wonderful course. And Sam, you've created a, a, an amazing business. But I also want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource and I congratulate them for supporting you. It's excellent. I'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done but I'd really like to thank everybody else. I have learnt so much from all of you. It's just been so exhilarating. I'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal. So thank you all very, very much. So I want to say, look, I've forever been doing courses and programs. I've probably spent over $350,000 in my life. Um, this was worth every cent. I'm very, very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches. Um, and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget. Um, definitely was worth every minute as well. So thanks. Hi guys, I just wanted to say uh, my work relies on face-to-face -face, uh, workshops speaking at conferences around the world. So investing in this course is really about looking to the future. So it's really an investment in the long term. It's been a really, really professionally put together course. So commendations all round to all of you.
for the share. I mean, uh, how how good the feeling was after completing the session, and and, and I think the feedbacks uh, uh, were were just were just too good. So I mean, that is uh, that is forcing me to think beyond. Uh, I, I think it was pretty linear thinking earlier, and now it is pretty diversified. So that is that is very helpful. Thank you, Charlene, Christiane, and Sam for obviously um, the benefit and the inspiration you've given to so many of us, and to all the participants. Because I think, for me personally, this is the first time I've felt that I've been in such a safe space to be vulnerable and to make mistakes. Um, and I know that a lot of us have shared some really traumatic um, events in our life, possibly for the first time publicly. So that's just been a really huge thing. So thank you for everyone for opening up and for people to open up and be authentic. I'd like to firstly acknowledge you, Sam. Thank you so much for um, in instituting the Speakers Institute and all of the lovely people who've attended today. I think they've done an absolutely wonderful job. I think all of their stories are worthy of stage presence. Um, I think you'll all go very far. I just wanted to say being out of the workforce for six years looking after little kids and this is the first course I've ever done and it was astounding it blew my mind it was beyond my expectations and thank you Kate for the feedback today that was brilliant and it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before because you know when you leave for a while and you come back it's all a bit dodgy so thank you and it was really an uh, experience which I was looking for to give that push, uh, the last push which is needed, because I'm 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 very low on on execution. So your your story and your message gave me that push which I which I really needed. So thank you very much, and also to the fellow fellow participant for bearing with me. Oh, thank you everyone. You've all inspired me today, and I want to thank you, Sam, for putting this on, and Christian and. Charlene, for, Charlene inspired me to come through conversations we had and so I'd like to thank her in particular and got a lot out of it so thank you everyone and thanks for all the lovely comments. First of all I would like to say thank you, massive thank you to every single one of you. It, it was a great company, proximity is power. Um, I'm overwhelmed with the um, with all the love and energy and everything else. I've learned so much, and by this sheer circumstances, by now that I'm sitting at home and I actually can do it, I'm blown away that I'm actually doing it. It's amazing, and I really want to thank you, Sam, for this amazing course. Yeah, I just wanted to thank every single one of you, um, especially you, Sam, and um, all of the mentors as well. There can be at times where we're alone. We think we're the only ones, we feel like we're the only ones going through that. And to share would be to burden each other. But in a space like this, it actually brings us closer together. So thank you very much for sharing um, all your stories and thank you for the opportunity. I'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done. But I'd really like to thank everybody else. I have learned so much from all of you. It's just been so exhilarating. I'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal. So thank you all very, very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It has been absolutely awesome. I've learned a hell of a lot today and I really feel like we're all improving. So thank you so much. It's been oh, really awesome. I wish everyone all the best on this on the course. I think it was a wonderful course. And Sam, you've created a an amazing business but I also want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource and, and I congratulate them for supporting you it's excellent thank you very much all the feedbacks were, were, were golden for me I learned a lot plus uh, how I should not try to put two you know I should not try to put all the information in those six minutes I should let the audience absorb what I'm trying to convey. They should absorb my story and, uh, you know, so as the energy level should, should fluctuate properly at the right moment. So thank you very much for that. So I want to say, look, I've forever been doing courses and programs. I've probably spent over $350,000 in my life. Um, this was worth every cent. I'm very, very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches. Um, and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget. Um, definitely was worth every minute as well yeah i really want to thank the coaches and uh and i've noticed a difference in everyone as well over the last couple of days as well so um so thanks 
guys, I just wanted to say uh, my work relies on face-to-face -face, uh, workshops, speaking at conferences around the world. So investing in this course is really about looking to the future. So it's really an investment in the long term. It's been a really, really professionally put together course. So commendations all around to all of you. To all the staff from Speakers Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all, because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. Thank you. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody, a child or maybe an adult, has had an emotional response to something and you have felt completely inadequate. Hi, I'm Harry Candlin and I made the choice to come to boot camp so that I could really uh, improve the way that I could speak to my audience. And uh, what I've learned is the real art of story showing, not just storytelling and how powerful that can be. I live my life at five foot two. I can see to the back of the room, I can see everybody there. But children, they live their life down here. So what can they see? Well, I can see shoes and feet and bags. Not a lot. And what happens is that as adults, we're so busy with our lives. We've got mortgages to pay, rent to pay, friends to talk to, <laughs> that we miss it. There's a verse in the Bible, mm. which I was thinking about there as I was watching you speak. And by mm. the way, um, outstanding stories showing, but the verse is from Isaiah chapter mm. 60, verse one. Arise, shine, for, for your, your light, light has, has come. come, and the glory of God has risen up on you. This is your oh. verse. And, and I oh. believe that God is calling you right now to arise and shine, for your light has come. This is the Celebrity Authority Show. Please welcome your host, Sam Cawthorne. So hello and welcome to another amazing show here. I'm super pumped and excited about having our special guest here today. His name is Dan Searle. Dan is actually from South Australia and Adelaide. And Dan, you've got a really phenomenal story. And not only that, you've been through a huge transition in your life. Hey, give us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, see, I'm, I'm Dan. Uh, I um, am an expert in transition. I uh, have been through, like I said, a big transition in my last 10 years of my life, especially in the last two years. Uh, the transition from um, being a worker in, in fly and fly industry in Australia, um, from moving from that into a, a new career, a new, a new path as being a professional speaker and a an expert in my field. Hey, give me a little bit more of an idea. Fly in, fly out. What what exactly is that? Yeah, fly in, fly out is uh, it's basically an industry where you fly in and out of remote locations all over Australia and, and international as well. So this is like the mining industry. Yeah, yeah? mining, mining, oh. oil and gas type industry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, what what exactly were you doing out there in these remote sites? What I was doing is I was a construction worker. On, on site, some big projects. So the last one, which is at Barrow Island off the coast of um, WA, which is a little island. You know, you can't really see it on the map, it's that small. That's that's how remote these things and are. And so this island isn't a resort island. It's <laughs> not where there's lots of resorts and lots of nice beaches and lots of nice girls or anything like that, no? I wish, I wish. Okay. Uh, it, this place, you couldn't even go on the beach in certain times. You couldn't go in the water at all. Well, you, you why were, not? Because it was uh, a nature reserve. So. Yeah. Basically, there was no access to the beach during turtle season, which was uh, November to March. Yeah, right. You couldn't go on the beach at all. Um, so basically, you were confined to this, basically a prison, because that's what the design of the camp actually was made up on a prison. So right. the, the design was had a, basically had a moat around it as well, as to stopping <laughs> other animals and stuff getting wow. into the camp. Yeah, it does sound a, bit, a little bit like a prison. Hey, tell me, so, so what? Yeah, yeah, you're sleeping in bunk beds. Did you actually get a, a nice room? G give us more of an idea of what this was like, and also how long were you out there at a time? Was it was it a three four days at a time, or was it a couple of weeks? Like, give us more of an idea of what fly in fly out is, and. Uh, and what type of, you know, how many hours were you doing each, each day? Yeah, 
Um, bunk beds were what we had. There was a bunk, top bunk, bottom bunk. Uh, mm. Being that I was a day shift, I would be on the, on the bottom bunk. Mm. I should be, I'd be on the top bunk. Um, but basically, yeah, it was just a, a room with a, a bed. There was a desk there to do a bit of study, whatever on. There was a, a cupboard for our clothing and a little bathroom. That was sort of our home. And that was home for 26 days straight. 10 hour, 10 hour days every day. You wouldn't ten, have and that's off. ten hour work days. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's but that's and not that's every day, six every six day, days, seven days a week. Seven days a week. No seven day days a week for yes. twenty six days in a row. Yes. Why do you want to do this? Like, why, why, why would you anyone want to do this? It sounds like a prison. Yeah, it, it literally was a prison. That's where I was trapped. Uh, that's why I, I did it because I wanted the money, and I, I thought that. And apparently, it's pretty good money. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The money, the money, the money is really, really great. That it, it is really impressive. The money we get, but. Is it worth it? Exactly. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. it. I, I thought it was because I, I was in the mentality that life is about money and about money can buy you happiness, but it doesn't always do that. How, how do you mean? What, what do you mean it doesn't always do that? Because most people are under the impression that, you know, if I get lots of money, then I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Isn't that right? That, that's, the, that, that's the idea, yes, that, that money actually is designed to give us happiness, but it doesn't. It didn't for me anyway. I personally wasn't fulfilled with all the money. I'd go out and I'd buy. I bought a flash ute. You know, that was my car that I loved driving. That and my WRX. I just love those cars. Bit of a but need for speed. Need yeah. for speed. I, yeah, I love okay. driving fast. I love my fast cars. <laughs> but I wasn't fulfilled because I was missing out on life at home. I was missing out on the birthday parties. I'm missing out on all the holidays. I'm missing out on all of the, the things that everyone in life takes for granted. Mm. What, what, what truly matters, you know, it's interesting, hey, you know, trying to have that balance between earning lots of money, but also having a life with your loved ones, etc. So how did you navigate that? And how do you do it now? Like what, what, like now you don't work at all and you just spend time there or like, yeah. how, how did you get yourself out of that rat race of earning all this money now, not earning it, or are you? I, I, I am still earning nice money, yeah, yeah. But a lot of things triggered it for me. Uh, one of them was my partner. She said to me, um, you know, she struggled with me being away all the time. Being from New Zealand herself, she, she couldn't actually talk to me all the time when she wanted to. She'd be going through bouts of depression up and down, being that she wasn't at home with her family. That would have been well. tough, mate. That was for, tough for, for her. For any yeah. guy to go through that and knowing that your loved one, your best friend, uh, your future wife, yes, yes, <laughs> you know, is there at home and she's suffering, and you, yeah. you're not there with you. That, yeah. that, that's tough. It's, it is. It's the sense of loneliness, not only for me but for her as well. Everyone there was lonely, and uh, she was a big inspiration for me, a big turning point for me. And there's also one time I remember that my dad actually messaged me on on Facebook chat one day, and uh, he asked me, "Son, when are you coming home?" And to me, that made me realise that there was not just me being affected by what I was doing, it was my family and my friends as well. All right, Dan, that's, uh, that's really powerful. So you say that you're a transition expert. And so does that then mean that, how did you transition? And for the people out there that really want to transition in their life, you know, we all want to transition. You know, sometimes we are stuck, right? And we need to get out of that. How, how do we do that? Yeah. And how did you do that? that? That's a great question, Sam. Um, basically, what I did is I found myself a network at that place I was at working that actually were interested in furthering their life and furthering their careers. So we basically grouped together and we also we all got ourselves involved in investing and looking at other ways to use our money wisely because there's a problem in Fly and Fly Out that everyone in Fly and Fly Out thinks of the money and they just go and blow it. Mm. And they go and buy all these things. And that's yeah. what I did for five years. I wasted money for five years. And then you transitioned. And I transitioned. I went, I went to a seminar. The seminar got me thinking about a lot of things. It really- well, Would you really suggest other people to go to seminars to help them transition? Yeah. Would yeah. you suggest for other people that if they want to go from where they are today to where they want to be, what, go out and get some help, get a coach, go to a personal development, go to Tony Robbins? Like, what, what I, would you recommend? That's helped me. I, I would suggest anyone who, who might be struggling in life 
that personal develop, to personal development in yourself is never a bad thing. Mm -hmm. That spending money on you, on yourself, on your on your mind, right. on your on your body, yeah. all that stuff is never a bad investment. Right. If you have three things to help anyone at all out there to transition in their life, what would that be? What is it? Um, go to a seminar and allow yourself to be coached. Get unstuck like what, what are three things that are really help you that that can really help anyone at all out there to transition from where they're stuck to where they really want to be g g g give us an idea I, I think that the biggest thing is actually to have this conversation with yourself that am i really happy with where i'm going right now am, okay. am i fulfilled yeah. is get what serious is, about yeah, yourself yeah make a decision with yourself am um, i really enjoying and living the life that i really want to live right. Because a lot of people out there, they just go through the motions. Mm. And they get out of bed in the morning and look at their alarm clock and they think, oh no, yeah. time to get to work again. Great, so then you've made that decision, I don't wanna be where I am, what's the next thing? Next thing is look around, open yourself up and try and look within and see actually what you, what, what, what values you have, core values you have. See for me, my core right. value was, was family and freedom. Yeah. That was the big thing for me. Right. So that's where I decided to look for something that yep. would give me the flexibility to right. actually spend time with family, friends, and do what I love doing, which right. is travel. I love tra travel, awesome. I love it. And then the third thing, is, that's, is that now ready to take action? What's the, what's the, what's the last thing? That, that last thing is actually taking that step out of your comfort zone. Right. Out of your bubble that you've been living in for however many years. You, right. you need to take that first step out and actually open yourself up to learning new things, right. to, to really change yeah. your life. So there we heard it. We heard it from someone that's had a huge transition in their life from where they were to where they are now. So, so give us a snapshot. What do you do now, Dan? How, how do you earn money? Right now, I uh, invest in the stock market. I trade shares as a, as a sort of a short-term, day-term, a daytime trader. Yeah. Uh, develop property as well. Property is a big thing of me. I've always loved property. Wow. Now I've taken the next level to actually investing and wow. building houses. That's, and that's fantastic. It's, it's a phenomenal feeling when yeah. you see something go from nothing to a full house yeah. in just a few months. Dan, it's that is amazing. That is just awesome. Hey, give us an idea. Well, what do you love doing in your spare time? Well, like, what's your third space? We have this thing which is called third space, right? Which basically means outside of work, outside of your home, what do you do to recharge your tank? And what what's your third space? My third space is meditation. I love meditation. It's yeah. something I've just learned now. The meditation is great to sort of recharge and relax yourself yeah. and, and enjoy just the moment that you're in and, and sort of shut off and then just be be with, be who you are. That's great. I love that and, and golf. You're a I'm golfer. A, I'm a terrible golfer. What's terrible, your... but I love playing it. Wow, what's your handicap? I don't have one. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, Dan. Hey, Dan, thank you so much for joining us here at the Celebrity Authority Show. But before you go, we have this thing at the end of each one of our shows, which is called 10 Questions in 60 Second Challenge. Do you accept this challenge? Yes. It's All great. right, Dan. Crack. Great. Fantastic. So just the first thing that comes into your mind yep. whenever you hear this question. So, Dan, your time starts now. Favourite colour? Blue. Favorite food? Anything. Vegan. Anything. A anything vegan. Vegan. Yeah, yes. you're a vegan. Yeah. 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 That's he's, another topic. And you've got he's got vegan shoes. Yes. And a vegan belt. And a vegan belt. Yes. And is that a vegan beard or no? Yes. Alright, wait, oh, 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 wait, the time is alright. So favorite celebrity? Jason Statham. Oh yeah, he's the man. He's the he man. He does our ball, us bald men proud. <laughs> favorite actor? Kim. Him. Yep, Jason Statham. Or, yep, yep. or Steven Seagal. Oh, it's Steven Seagal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on. Uh, favorite professional speaker? You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> favorite book? Simon Sinek. Start with why. Oh, totally. And his TED Talk is his awesome. His TED Talk is amazing. Uh, favorite movie? Oh, that's a tough one. TED. The movie. Oh, Ted, oh the Teddy Bear yeah. one. Oh, that's a naughty one. Uh, favorite city? Melbourne. Yes. Sorry, love, I think it's silly. Love coffee uh, in Melbourne. Favourite drink? Coffee. With almond milk. Almond milk, coffee. Favourite pizza topping? Anything without cheese now. Without cheese? Yes. Uh, very good. Okay, and Dan Su, if you could be an animal, which animal would you be? A cheetah. A cheetah? Why a cheetah? They're 
fast. Let's go fast. Fast. I love fast. So, guys, thank you so much, Dan Zell, for welcoming me here. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Zell. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Our next 10x speaker is originally from the United Kingdom. And she now lives in beautiful Melbourne. She's an expert on relationships, workplace relationships, and her first-hand knowledge of toxic work environments is impressive. She's had some really, really bad jobs. But that hasn't stopped her from dedicating her time to improving the workplace of thousands of Aussies through understanding relationships better. Please welcome to the stage, Joe O'Donovan. The future of the workplace. Technology is taking over the world and it's definitely taken over the workplace. And it's fabulous, it's brilliant. How many of you are on your phone right now while I'm talking? <laughs> If we just look at some of the stats, um, 4 million blog posts every day. What about that one? 500 million tweets per day. Now, that can't be all just one bloke. That's a lot of stuff going on. We are more connected than ever before in history. You, you know that. We've got more technology, more social media, all the rest of it. But if this is the case, why? Are we so sad? Why, when Australians were actually directly asked, did more than 50% say they had experienced loneliness for at least one day in the week before? Looking at these stats from um, Swinburne University and the Australian Psychological Society, you can see that you know one fifth of Australians rarely or never feel they've got someone to turn to for help. Why? Why do we feel like this? Well, I think it's simple. We've embraced technology so much, we're so connected that we're forgetting how to connect on the human level. We're not interacting in that way anymore. And whilst these statistics are absolutely sort of staggering, I believe them to be true because I've been one of those lonely people. It was 10 years ago when my marriage ended. Now, I'd actually been very lonely in the marriage. Um, as some of you might yourself know, uh, when you're in a couple and you're disconnected, that's a really lonely place to be. So the marriage ended and I felt liberated. It was like, okay, you know, yes, I'm a failure, yes, I'm now going to be a divorce statistic, and yeah, okay, I'm a woman in my mid-30s, hardly likely to find a decent bloke, blah, 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 blah. It was always going to be a roller coaster of emotions. But for me, work was my saviour. It was my sanctuary. I was a primary school teacher at the time, and I loved it. I had this passion for seeing the children developing their critical thinking skills and, and when they discovered something new about the world that, you know, how excited they would get and shaping these people who were going to go out and be those global citizens. It was, it was I'm very passionate about that job. I absolutely loved it. But even beyond the classroom, the colleagues that I worked with, they were fantastic. At recess, they'd grab me and we'd go over to the cafe and grab a coffee. And at lunchtime, we would sit in the staff room around this big table and get the newspaper and all do the quiz together. You know, there was always someone at the weekend who wanted to go check out a festival or a new bar in Melbourne. They really nurtured me through my newfound singledom. This went on for probably a couple of years. And, you know, I guess you always expect there's going to be a change. And boy, did we have a change. The change came in the form of a new principal at the school. Now, this new principal, she had a very, um, very clear way of how she saw leadership. 
It was pretty much along the lines of divide and rule. She would set people against each other. Oh, why can't everyone teach like them? Oh, we need a return to neater handwriting and chanting of tables. She would actually analyze people's teaching based on a poster in their classroom. We were not living like this anymore. It was much more like this. Needless to say, we did not go into the staff room to do that quiz anymore. We hid in our classrooms. We stayed away. The way she talked about my colleagues when they weren't there was distressing for me. And it made me think, what does she say about me when I'm not here? It became really obvious. I'm the problem. I've been teaching for years, but who do I think I am? Who do I, why am I teaching? I am failing these kids. As I retreated into myself, I hid behind emails instead of actually talking to my colleagues. You know, all the, all the rest of the staff were in survival mode too. Um, so yeah, I would avoid conversations. Uh, at the photocopier, I wouldn't make eye contact. I'd make a cup of tea and just take it back to my classroom. Then one day, I was on yard duty. And there's always a kid who wants to hold your hand and chat about what they've been doing that day. So, you know, I'm walking along with this little boy. He was about seven years old. And as we stood there, suddenly I just get this yank on my arm. I sort of look down at him and he says, you seem really sad. This boy, like I, said, I don't even know his name, but this boy, he could see behind my fake smile. He could sense how tired I was of, you know, pretending in front of my colleagues, the, the parents, the children. This boy had busted me. I thought I'd done such a good job of hiding it. As I would drive into the school each day, I'd actually have tears rolling down my face because I would just dread going in there. What was the point? What's the point? I'm not making any difference. She's told me that. Now, teaching can be a stressful job at the best of times, but I'm not sure if you're aware that um, actually, for the mental health claims in the workplace, teachers make the second highest number of claims. The second highest number with only 1% less than the emergency services. That can't be right. We were being told to our faces we were rubbish, so there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that's what I was. I totally lost my confidence. This boy could even see that. Today, I work with companies that embrace their employees and <laughs> It's fantastic. They are putting employees back into the heart of the workplace. They're looking for that human connection. Leaders that ask, are you OK? That's what we need to do. We were, it was mentioned earlier today. Attention is the biggest gift you can give anyone these days. Give the people you work with. If you are an employer, give your employees your attention. Look at them. Ask them, are you okay? Listen to what they're saying and look beyond just the words. The future of the workplace, the workplaces we need in the future are going to embrace technology but they're going to embrace people too, humans. They're going to have that right at the heart of their culture. They're going to um, have authentic conversations where employees can actually say what they think needs to be done in the workplace and how it should be done. I mean, Microsoft employees earlier this week, I think it was, when they were objecting to their technology, their work being used for making weapons. You know, uh, we heard this morning from Rebecca, millennials, every, not, it's not even just millennials, but people are looking for workplaces where 
they have a voice, where they have impact, doing work that is in line with their values. In this technological age, this is what we need to be striving for. Work that is not just meaningless and about profit, but also about incorporating that connectedness into the workplace. So I know for me, that lack of connectedness in that teaching job was what basically drove me out of the job. The future of the workplace is human and the best is yet to come. Thank you. Hi guys, Sam Cawthon here, CEO and founder of Speakers Tribe, and I'm super excited about this video. This curriculum video here is all around participate. You know, I believe some of the greatest keynoters on the planet, particular trainers and facilitators as well, not only do they know how to articulate really effectively, but also they know how to facilitate participation. You know, I've been in so many events where I've been up on stage and the audience is very cold. They don't know who I am, they're very skeptical, they're leaning back in their chairs and literally they're about to take their phones out because they're already bored, even before I get up on stage. So really the reality is, as professional speakers, as influencers, what we really need to do is grab their attention instantly. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the three ways in how to grab their attention and not only that, for get them involved so they're leaning forward, so they're participating, so they're taking part of activities, etc. as well. And that way, from there, I'm actually then going to share with you three hacks that you can really start talking, thinking about it, whether you wanted them to participate in short bursts, such as five to 20 seconds, if you want to get them to participate in medium bursts, such as one to three minutes, or even longer bursts, such as uh, five minutes, even up to 20, 45 minutes thereabouts, in activities that itself as well. So the reality is that my general rule of thumb is this, is that if you are speaking for over 40 minutes, then you do need an activity. I'll say that again, if you are speaking for over four minutes, 40 minutes, you do need an activity. So then that means then, if, if you are doing training or keynoting over 40 minutes, what activities can you do? There's a few rules around this. The first one is this, is lead by example. Now my encouragement to you, if you haven't already, get your pens and paper out, even your phones out, your notes, and write some of this down, yeah? Number one is lead by example. And what we mean by that is what do you need to do to actually lead by example when you're on stage? You know, it super frustrates me when I see speakers up on stage, they ask for the audience participation, such as put their hand up, but they don't put up their hand themselves. So I believe if you lead from example, then obviously then your audience will then follow suit. So if you want the audience to lean in, you lean in. If you want the audience to participate, you participate. If you want the audience to put their hand up or, or, or do an actual action or whatever it is, you must lead by example. And the reality is that they will always do around 70% energy of what you do. So for example, if you do this, your audience will do this. If you do this, they'll do this. If you do this, they'll do that. If you do that, they'll literally just go like that. So my encouragement to you is, but would number one be always this, lead by example when it does come to every, any level of participation and interaction. The second thing is this, is framing. You know, I remember this one time where I was speaking in a, in a jail and it, was, um, and it was one of the major jails down there in Tasmania. And one of the most fascinating things is that when you get up there, they don't want to be there. Um, and in most cases, they're talking with each other and they're big built and it's, it's quite intimidating to say the least. And the last thing you, you would believe is that if you're speaking for 90 minutes and you think, how can these people here participate here? How can we get them involved? How can we get them to do an activity? And it was certainly very, very difficult. So number two here is all about framing. 
What I needed to do in that particular situation, I needed to frame the importance of why participate. And not only that, I needed to frame that the people that do participate, these are the people that are brave, that are courageous. These are the people that aren't worrying about what other people think. These are the people here that actually really want to get something out of this, want to learn, want to grow. So in most cases, if I frame it in a way that if you don't participate, then you're scared about what other people think of you. If you don't participate, then you're not brave, then you're not courageous. If you don't participate, then you don't want to learn, you don't want to grow. Then suddenly now the audience, in a way, are feeling a bit guilty if they don't participate. Now, this certainly isn't a guilt thing as such, but it certainly is a really great sh um, strategy in order to get your audience to participate where they can. And then the third one is this, identify. And what we mean by that is ultimately, if you want your audience to participate, you need to identify what type of audience it is. Ultimately, if I'm speaking to a bunch of young teenagers, uh, then I'm gonna identify, great, these here, they want high level, they, they want high energy, they wanna yell, scream, clap, jump on their feet, high five, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas if I'm, if I'm identifying that I'm speaking in front of a group of CEOs and executives, then these people here are not that prone to jump up on their feet and high five and yell and scream, etc. So really what I need to do is I need to identify exactly which audience that I'm in and that way then I can identify exactly what level of participation that I can expect from that audience. So my encouragement to you is lead from example, frame how you need to get them engaged and ultimately then identify what do you need to do to understand who is in your audience and what level of activity or participation would they be more comfortable in doing. You know, uh, one of my keynotes, in my Bounce Forward keynote, I get up and I play the guitar and then at the end of me playing the guitar with only one arm, it's, it's pretty cool, but then I actually then get everyone up on their feet and sing with me. And I remember in most corporate audience, I've, um, I've, you know, I've led from example, so obviously I sing first and then my audience sing. I then frame to the audience, hey, look, now you're about to jump up on your, on, on your feet and sing, and this is all about a breakthrough in your own life. And then obviously, you know, I've identified exactly that this is going to be the right audience. But I once did it in front of a group of CEOs and executives, and it did not go down very well at all. I saw half of the room stand up, I saw one or two people sing, and that was about it. And everyone else felt really uncomfortable. Thus, I also then felt uncomfortable as well. All right. So this, then this brings me to my second element in today's uh, uh, masterclass here, All on Participate. And it was all around what exactly are the best activities. So I've broken this down into three elements. One is the short, five to 20 seconds. The second one is the medium, one to three minutes. And then the third one here is a long three to 30 minutes plus. Uh, so I'm gonna unpack all of these as we go along. So the first one here is short, five to 20 seconds. My encouragement to you would be, it would be to do a short one at least every 20 minutes up to 40 minutes max. And what a short one is could be something like, you know, um, hands up if or has, um, nod your head if this has happened to you, or turn to the person and um, give them a high five, or, you know, or um, look around the room and search for this color, or whatever it is, yeah? So that there's a really, really quick one, so, you know, hands up, or has this ever happened to you, nod your head if this has, or whatever it is, or look at the person next to you and repeat after me, or whatever, yeah? So they're really short exercises, and my encouragement to you would be to get your audience to, um, participate in those in at least every 20 minutes if you're doing a 60 minute keynote. And one of the main reasons is it keeps them awake, keeps them uh, alert. If you're talking for longer than 20 seconds and there's zero interaction, there's zero throwing back to the audience and what is there with them, then ultimately they're gonna fall asleep no matter how motivational you might be or they'll just simply switch off. So that's the first thing. Second thing is this medium, one to three minutes. So this is where it is more of an exercise. So this could be something like, okay, stand up and go and high five th three people. Or it could be something like, you know, uh, um, stand up if this has ever happened to you or whatever it might be. Or another one could be something like, turn to the person next to you and ask them this question, bang, bang, bang. I'll give you 90 seconds, yeah? So that is really, really good quick one. Or the other thing is this, is, I, I, is look around the room 
and search for anything at all or what, what is or look under your chair and see if you can find. So these are really short ones that you know might require just simply standing up or sitting down, talking to the person next to you, but it certainly isn't standing up and walking away from your seat. Because ultimately, no matter how uh, big or small your room is, once you get them to stand up and walk away from their seat, it will take a long time for you to calm them back down, get them back to their seat, sit them back down, grab the energy back in your control, and then start speaking again. So this is still only a medium uh, activity here. Uh, I've got a few ones here where I actually get everyone to stand up, everyone turn towards the uh, window, or everyone turn towards one side, put both your hands up in the air very slowly, bring your hands down, and just start massaging the shoulders in, the front, of, in front of you. And that particular exercise works really, really, well, most of you guys that have seen me speak to the person next to you, or alternatively, for those people that have actually come along to boot camp, we did an exercise where we get where we went one, one, two, one, one, two, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. You know what I'm talking about. So they're always fun as well. And then the other one was obviously your power moves. So you stand up and do your power moves, yeah? So they're the, they're the medium ones. And now the long ones here, uh, so this is anywhere between five to 30 minutes. So some really great long exercises that you can get your audience to participate in can be some warm-ups of the room. So what we do in a lot of our boot camps, it's about talking to the person next to you, uh, interview them, and then come up on stage and then actually um, share with you uh, about this other person that you've just met. Or alternatively, another exercise is go and find someone that actually is the same birthday month as you. Or alternatively, go and find someone who's got the same surname, last letter, in, you know, a, as yours or whatever. So there's a lot of other, um, so a lot of these activities here could either be group work or could be working in partnership or could be to go and find something, yeah? So these are some great activities here. However, again, it is all about those first three elements. Lead by example. You must lead from example. So even if you want to show to the audience how this is done, you bring up an audience member and say, guys, this is how it works. Bang, 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 bang. Did you get that? Let's try again. Come up here on stage, bang, bang. So you lead from example. The second one here is framing. So framing is all specifically around what do you need to do to frame this exercise in a way that it's very, very, very clear to them. It's so clear. So sometimes I would literally go, so guys, what I want you to do right now, I want you to get your phone and I want you to turn it on. That's right, turn it on, unlock it, whatever it is. Now I want you to find, find your Facebook app. So just go, you know, everyone knows what the Facebook app looks like. So you just find your Facebook app. Now go into your Facebook app. Now right up the top there, there is a search bar. What I'd like for you to type in there is speakers tribe. That's right, and this is how you spell it, S-P-E-A-K. E-R-S space tribe, T-R-I-B-E, speakers, tribe, and then global, G-L-O-B, et cetera, et cetera. So this way, I'm literally teaching them how to do it. And then I then say, now like that page. Now how you like the page, it's just there on the, uh, on the top, a the, little bit to the side, just simply like that. That is a great way how we can stay in contact with you. Instead of me saying something like, so guys, what I want everyone to do, go onto Facebook and go onto uh, our page and just like the page. They're not going to do it. They will not do it. So my greatest encouragement to you would be lead by example, always frame the actual activity, explain in absolute detail, and ultimately really identify who is your market and make sure you're communicating in their language. Guys, I really hope that this video really gave you value and please my encouragement to you would be to go out there and actually try it out because you're not going to learn anything something like this. So go out there and implement it where you can. For those people that are actually joining Speakers Tribe for the very, very first time, I wanted to say welcome to you. And have Speakers Tribe claim to 
see what the next generation of influencers in this world. And ultimately here at Speakers Tribe, we're all about helping you make a difference in the world. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's possible in the next chapter with you once you lean into Speakers Tribe. And as always, don't forget, the best is yet to come. I'll see you soon. After a few years of working at age 31, I decided to start my biotech recruitment business 17 years ago. I had no much cash, no degree, no biotech knowledge, and no recruitment knowledge. But what I do have is a learning disability called dyslexia, which I only found out two years ago. So with just $10,000 startup capital, a donated computer, a second-hand printer, a phone, I started a biotech recruitment business Fast forward 12 years, we became a multi-award winning industry leader. I sold my business to a public listed Japanese company at a valuation of $10 million. From being given the life sentence of an academic non pauper to becoming a multi-award winning industry leader in biotech recruitment, I discover a new way to win. A new way to win isn't all about aspiration and success. It is about overcoming a specific challenge to break through to a future we love. Overcoming the fear of failure was my biggest win. My story was noticed and featured by the media. I was invited to give talk. I realized that my story could impact lives and make a difference. So I signed up for a three-day boot camp at Speaker Institute. I learned to use powerful stagecraft and communication frameworks to make my story come to life. It gave us the voice to share our stories. The purpose of being alive is to experience life itself, to learn, to create, to inspire, and to find a new way to win. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode here at Speakers TV. My name is Sam Cawthorn and we are super excited about Speakers TV and about these episodes that we bring to you every single weekday as well as also on every single Saturday. Guys, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any feedback at all for us, or maybe you want to comment right down right now in the chat bar about what was your biggest takeaway from today's uh, session. But also not only that, why don't you join us? So here at Speakers Institute, we do have a number of programs such as our online boot camps or our protege program at Speakers Tribe here. We're all about running these big, large annual conferences every year, but also not only that, there is an annual membership that you can get. We're in your city. We do have tribe gatherings, all really encouraging you going from where you are today to where you really want to be. Or maybe you want to tell your friends and your family about Speakers TV. But can I please encourage you, why don't you like this page? Why don't you join us each day? Why don't you tell other people about these episodes? Because we are all about really helping you on this journey to becoming that recognized voice of authority for you to find your message and your story and get that out there into the world. We are super excited about your journey. So please lean in and join us today to your success. My name is Sam Cawthorn, and don't forget, the best is yet to come.